and welcome to Mr. Seeley's lesson on the Spanish Armada. I'm going to try and make it more interesting than that kid, okay? I can do better than a kid. Right, so today we're going to learn about the Spanish Armada. This all began in 1588. It is a battle between Spain and England, okay? At this time, Spain was the most powerful country in Europe. Its king, Philip II, controlled vast dominions throughout Europe. You can see here the different countries controlled by Spain. Now, Philip was really annoyed with the English at this time. There are a number of reasons. Firstly, English pirates and privateers had been attacking Spanish treasure ships in the Caribbean. Philip was furious that all this gold and silver was being brought back by the pirates and the privateers and given to Elizabeth. In addition to that, England was a Protestant country and Philip was a passionate Catholic. He believed strongly that it was his duty to God to convert the English people back to the true religion, Catholicism. He wanted to repair, return England to the Pope. Now, he was also annoyed because Elizabeth had been sending men, money and supplies to Philip's enemies in the Netherlands. Now, at this time, Spanish controlled the Netherlands, present day Holland, and Elizabeth had been helping Dutch rebels attack the Spanish, and Philip was furious about it. So what did he do? He decided to launch the Spanish Armada. So what Philip did was he put together a massive fleet of ships with which to attack England. Now, he'd been building them here in the Spanish port of Cadiz. Now, a year earlier than 1588, the brave English seaman, the Elizabethan hero, Sir Francis Drake, had sailed down to Cadiz, led this daring raid. He'd sailed into the port. He'd destroyed about 30 Spanish ships. He'd destroyed food barrels. He'd destroyed supplies. And he put the sailing of the Armada back about a year. But in 1588, Philip was ready. He had 130 ships. That's right. 130 ships. That is the biggest fleet of ships ever assembled in the world ever. Massive, okay? Now you can see here they covered about 12 kilometers of sea. This huge armada made its way right down from Spain here all the way up to the English Channel. Now this is where the English had their first piece of clever success. The first reason we might think that the English outsmarted the Spanish. What they did is they lit beacons. So along the hilltops of southern England, right down from Cornwall, they lit beacons all across the countryside so that the message that the Armada was coming got to London and England had time to prepare. Now it was at this point that Elizabeth took control and showed what a great leader she was. Now why do we have leaders? We have leaders to inspire us, to make, make us join together and want to fight. And what Elizabeth did at Tilby Drocks was a fantastic example of that. She turned up to 2,000 ecstatic troops and what she delivered was pure gold. She arrived dressed in a breastplate showing that she was ready to fight and she gave probably one of the greatest speeches in English history. She said, I have come amongst you at this time, not for my recreation and disport, but being resolved in the midst and the heat of battle to live and die amongst you all, to lay down for God and my kingdom and my people, my honour and my blood, even in the dust. And I think foul scorn that Palmer or any prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm, to which, rather than any dishonour should grow by me, I myself shall take up arms. I may have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and a king of England too. Now, that inspired the troops. But remember, it wasn't just 130 ships for the Spanish. The English had a fleet too. Now, they were led by Lord Howard of Effingham. Okay, He provided the noble leadership, but the real key man behind this was none other than Sir Francis Drake, a great naval commander. He understood uh, the seas around England. He was an experienced sailor 
and he inspired love and respect amongst his men. So what we can see is the English had fantastic leadership in Lord Howard of Effingham and Sir Francis Drake. On the other hand, the Spanish had a very poor leader. His name was the Duke of Medina Sidonia. Now, he was not militarily experienced and he certainly had no naval experience. Uh, in fact, he even complained to Philip that when he went to sea, he got seasick and always caught a cold. Not a great choice of leader. He did not have the experience and he did not have the understanding of naval command that was necessary. Okay, now Philip's plan was to sail up the, the channel. They were going to sail up the channel and sail to Calais. Now, at Calais, which is in France, they were going to meet with the Duke of Parma. Now, the Duke of Parma was the finest military leader in Europe at the time, and the Spanish infantry were feared throughout Europe. The plan was to pick up the Spanish troops that had been in the Spanish Netherlands, transport them to England, defeat Elizabeth, and make Philip king of England as well as Spain. Now, this plan had several flaws. In Calais, it wasn't really a suitable place to pick up the troops. But also, when the Spanish Armada arrived in Calais, they laid anchor and Palmer was nowhere to be seen. They had to wait for the troops to arrive. Now, this is where the English took their chance. Now, the English under Sir Francis Drake had a magnificent plan. Sir Francis Drake descended to send in fire ships. Now these were eight old ships that he loaded with tar, straw, barrels of pig fat. And these were set alight and then set with no people on them, set sail to drift slowly towards the Spanish Armada. Now these eight fire ships effectively became floating bombs. As they sailed towards the Spanish, the Spanish panicked. They cut their anchors and fled off into the North Sea. And what this had done is this had broken their, the safety of their crescent formation with which they'd been sailing up the channel. They sailed off into the channel, pursued by the English. And we then have the Battle of Graveline. The English, with their more manoeuvrable, faster ships, which have longer range guns, can pick off the Spanish and defeat them. It turns out that the English had far better ships. They were smaller, they were more manoeuvrable, and they had better guns. The Spanish had large galleons. Their plan was to use the soldiers on board the ships to board other ships. They'd come up alongside, they'd use their grappling hooks, bring the other ship uh, close to them, and then they'd board, jump on board, and fight effectively a land battle at sea. But the English wouldn't let them do that. They kept their distance, kept picking off the Spanish, and now the Spanish were hungry, they'd run out of supplies, they were running out of ammunition. And the Duke of Medonia Sidonia took the decision to head north. The wind was blowing north, so he was going to head north round the coast of Scotland and head back to Spain. And this is where the final problem for the Spanish came. This is where they ran into the Great Gale. Now, the Great Gale was a, a large storm that was blowing north. And the Armada sailed straight into it. Now the English called this a Protestant wind. Uh, Elizabeth after this actually had a medallion struck with the Latin inscription, Flavit et disapati sunt, God blew and they were scattered. Uh, the Armada was blown north, ships were wrecked off the coast of Scotland, ships were wrecked off the coast of Ireland. The Spanish, tired, hungry, stumbled onto the beaches where the Scottish and the Irish came down and bludgeoned them on the beaches. The Armada limped all the way back to Spain. We think about only 60 of the original 130 ships actually made it back to Spain. It had been a huge humiliation for Philip and the Spanish. England were triumphant. England, in their queen, found a leader who could inspire them and unite the nation. And following this, we see England developing as a major naval power. And what we can see is in this Protestant state, the beginnings of a real national unity. The Spanish Armada had been a great success for England and a major failure for the Spanish. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. That's my first kind of proper video doing it like this. I hope it worked. Check it out with the kid who did history. I don't know which is better, but let's see. I hope you enjoyed it um, and there'll be more coming along soon. See you later.